First, let's start with architecture and protocols overview and the application and API tokens. So in Sendbird, uh, there's a Sendbird sits on the back end and uh, as a RESTful API service. Uh, and we have a API server and a chat server. Uh, the client side of your application will be connecting through to Sendbird through a WebSocket connection via the SDK. Um, the backend side of things connects through API calls uh, through RESTful API. Um, and you can also listen to webhook events from Sendbird. Uh, we will deliver them to you, such as message send webhook events or channel uh, change notifications, things of that nature. The Sendbird dashboard is also available to you, and that's also hooked up to Sendbird via HTTPS. So in Sendbird, applications are the main unit of tenancy. So think of Sendbird applications as one application um, uh, sits in, your application is one application that's inside of Sendbird and all of your users are uh, in that app. Um, the apps themselves are hosted in a specific server region. So, and we have many regions across the globe, such as Oregon, North Virginia, Frankfurt, uh, Seoul, and, and many more. Uh, we recommend that each Sendbird customer has a development app um, and separated from a production application. So for testing purposes, you can try out the application separately. Um, some customers of ours also uh, like to have a staging application to uh, test right before they go to production. Um, and then chat is limited, as I mentioned, to the single application context. So all of your users live inside the same uh, Sendbird application. And this means you can have um, multiple front end applications, such as an app on the web um, or two different mobile apps, one for iOS, one for Android, or in some cases, different applications for different user types. Uh, such as administrators or uh, you know, one group sees one kind of app versus the other kind of app, but all, all of this, it lives within the same Sendbird application on, on the back end. Um, with Sendbird, you can communicate to us through the platform API or through the SDKs. We strongly recommend that the platform stays on the server side and this keeps your uh, API token secure. Um, as it's not exposed in the client side of the app. And the SDKs are really good for uh, making real-time uh, events happen uh, on iOS, Android, uh, and JavaScript. So that way there's no delay when calling things through the API. So many times the real-time events that go through Sendbird are messaging, like such as sending a message, receiving a message. Um, and then it will call, the SDK will naturally call under the hood to uh, fetch like list of channels and things through the API. So it's all taken care of in the SDK level. Um, for API tokens, you can have a master API token or you can have a sub API token. So the, um, there can only be one master token, but there can be up to 10 sub API tokens. Uh, the sub tokens are really handy and, and strongly recommended to use because um, they can be issued and revoked easily from um, the customer's development side. Um, and then each developer could have their own sub token, or um, you could have a service running on your backend that has its own token as well. 